If they're if they've engrossed themselves in a bad habit and they can't seem to get out of it, what would be some advice from the Quran and uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet to be able to get out of a bad habit? A uh, couple of quick things in the Hasanat Yudh Ibn Sayyi'at, good deeds do away with bad ones. And that can also mean that if you uh, fill your time with productive activities, good things, then the same time that you were allotting to you know worse habits is going to get replaced. So that's one possible solution. The other, of course, is a change of environment and a change of company. And that's a really big one because a lot of our habits have to do with the environment we put ourselves in and the company that we surround ourselves with. So inshallah, you can, you know, if you can become aware of not just the bad thing that you do, but what is the what are the outside circumstances that lead you to become that way or lead you into that behavior, then inshallah, that should help you avoid that kind of thing. Um, somebody asked a question that I get asked quite often actually It's uh, what is the sign that Allah is happy with me Or what's the sign that Allah is unhappy with me So a quick thing about that uh, There are lots of signs of that But one easy one that you can And I can think about is What is Allah having me do in a given day If I am engaged in things that make Allah happy That's actually maybe an indication that Allah in fact is happy with me And if I'm engaged in things that Allah is unhappy with Then that's pretty much a sign that Allah isn't happy with me and I need to change that. So it's actually a, an equation between our behavior and our, you know, our, how Allah thinks of us. So we, we need to make some changes in our life. This man, Allah says the highest title he earned is that he's just a slave. Just a slave. Now think about the word slave. The word slave in any language, however you translate it, is not a dignified word. It's a pretty embarrassing word. When you use the word slave, you've taken away all respect. You've t- there's, there's no lower title that exists than slave. That's the title Allah gave this man, this teacher of Musa alayhi salam. Abdan. Not even al abd. Not even lam al ta'rif. Not even the slave. A slave. You want to know more? Among other slaves we have, min ibadina. <laughs> That's, that's the way he's described. Why? Because the highest honor, the highest honor you and I will ever earn is to be a less slave. No title, no money, no status, no accomplishment, no degree, no recognition by people will ever earn you and me the respect that will come to you and me if we internalize, truly internalize that we are in fact a less slave. There is no greater respect than that. And when you have that, you're not looking for respect from anywhere else. Your respect does not come from recognition. Can you imagine the most respectable human being on the earth at the time and nobody knew him? Nobody knew. And to, even to this day we argue what was his name. To this day we argue what's his name. Subhanallah. Our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Think about this as I leave you today. Our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has many names in the Quran. Allah calls him Muhammad. Allah calls him Ahmad. Allah calls him Rasul, Nabi, Muzammil, Muddathir. He's got many names. But when Allah Azza wa Jal took him up to the seventh heaven, this is the highest that any human being has ever reached, yes? That's the highest any human being has ever reached. Meaning, you are more honored now, Ya Rasulullah, than ever before. You understand? At that moment, what does Allah say? How does Allah describe him? فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أوحى. سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي أَسْرَى بِعَبْدِهِ لَا بِرَسُولِهِ لَا بِنَبِيِّهِ And even the word Muhammad is dignified, the praised one. But no, at that highest place, the highest title he earned is that he is a slave of Allah. This, this is the actual honor of a believer. The actual shield of honor that you and I wear is that we are proud to be slaves of Allah Azza wa Jal. And when that happens, it frees you from every other slavery. You are no longer a slave of fashion. You're no longer a slave of people's opinions. You're no longer a slave of money. You're no, lo- no longer a slave of status. You don't care about anything else because your dignity and your worth and your respect has come from slavery to Allah. Before I begin, I just want to share with you just uh, you know, a, a point of view that I think will help you remember some of these reminders, even past the khutbah. 
And that is that Allah Azza wa Jal has given us a different way of looking at reality. The Quran, you can think of it, Allah describes itself as nur, right? Quran is described as light. And if the lights are off and there's no light available, you can't see. And if the light is a certain color, let's say there's a red light bulb or a blue red light bulb or whatever, right? Whatever color that light is, that's how you're going to see everything. It's going to shade everything in that color. So when Allah describes the Qur'an as light, one of the things that, that that means is that the way we look at reality through the Qur'an changes. Like without the light of the Qur'an, when you look at the same thing, it looks different. With the light of the Qur'an, when you look at exactly the same thing, it looks different. And so the human eye is the same, but the light that's, coming, that's in, going inside the eye, and in this case inside of the heart, is changing the point of view entirely. But if you're driving down New York City and you see somebody covered up in a cardboard box, and you see them begging for money or whatever else. Like, the, the last words that come in your mind when you think of a person who doesn't have a home, who's scrapping for food, is successful. Like that's not what you think of. The word successful does not come in your mind when you see someone like that. As opposed to that, if you see someone walking into a, a you know, driving into a mansion with a brand new car or whatever else, you, you see certain, sla- you know, some status, or they're graduating from a university, or they're, they've got a very high-end job. When you see these kinds of things, even if you don't say them, the word successful kind of comes to mind, right? We can't even help it. These definitions exist in our conscience. But if you compare that with Qur'an's definition, you have the case of Ibrahim alayhi salam, one of the most successful human beings that ever lived, who was kicked out of his house. I mean, his father, he basically left his home. He became homeless. Our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, was expelled from Mecca. He lived in a cave, alayhi salatu wasalam. Like in any other you know, world view, you would look at someone that doesn't have a home and is living out of a cave, you would not think of them as successful. And on the flip side, you have one of the most incredible homes ever built, and that's the, the, the mansions and the palaces of the Pharaoh, which Allah Himself describes as maqamin kareem. Quran itself describes noble housing, incredible housing that these people had, locations that they had. And yet, he's the most degraded human being in history. In Surah Al-Kahf, I've mentioned the story often, and I, I wanted to highlight a different dimension of it today. One gardener, one farmer, says to the other, "Ana aktharu min kamalan wa azu nafaran." He says to the other, "Look, I have more money than you do. I have more money than you do." Now, it's not just about money; it's not cash that we're talking about here. It's an attitude. I have better shoes than you do. Some kid says at school to his friend, "I have a nicer backpack than you do." Oh God, you have a PS3? Through it. How are you even alive? How are you allowed in society? You just, you know, you, have a P, you don't have a PS4? You don't have an Xbox One? You know, p- kids making fun of each other and putting each other down based on what they have. And guess what? Those kids, if we didn't teach them as parents what it means to have things, and we didn't acknowledge that they're going to go to school and exhibit that kind of behavior, we're responsible. Kids are not evil in and of themselves. Kids are not show-offs in and of themselves. They learn and model this behavior from what they see from their parents. When their parents are talking about what kind of car somebody else drives, or what neighborhood they got their apartment in, you know, and when they're talking about, oh, this one, man, this guy, he's just, yeah, he's just a bus driver. He's just this, he's just that, you know. We're not going to invite them. This is, a, this is a party, this is a eat party for all the doctors in the community. We can't invite the security guard. It's awkward. Kids are hearing this stuff. They're developing a sense of superiority based on mal. Because you have money, you're better somehow. As a matter of fact, even kids will talk about, what does your dad do? What does your dad... Seriously? What does your dad do? You think somebody's gonna ask Ibrahim alayhi what does your dad do? And he's gonna say he builds idols? And that makes him less dignified? What does your dad do? This attitude that your place in society and your worth and your dignity is determined by money, by status, by car, by career, by the brand of clothes, whether or not you're wearing you know, real jewelry or not, somebody's wearing, some lady's wearing a Chanel, wants to make sure she tells people, this is a real one by the way. And you have, you have to think to yourself, does Allah, does Allah love you more? Is that why He gave you more money? And He love other people less? That's why He gave them less money? Is that how that works? Because that would mean Allah really loves Fir'aun. You know, رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ آتَيْتَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَأَهُ أَمْوَالًا زِينَةً وَأَمْوَالًا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Allah, Musa said to Allah Azza wa Jal, you gave the Pharaoh and you gave his general, generals lots of beautiful things and lots of money in this world. So if you think Allah loves people more because they have more money, 
Or you think Allah loves you more because you have more money, and He loves other people less because they have less than you do, then you've got a sickness in your heart. That's a sickness. And Allah often removes that sickness, He heals that sickness by taking away what you think you have that makes you better. And you know, in our, in our times, entertainers have a very high level of respect. Massive followings, people like fan, fanboy and fangirl over them, they die over them, they would, they would die to take a picture next to this actor, or next to this singer, or whatever. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm meeting you, this is the greatest moment of my life. And, you know, because these people are so amazing. What's so amazing? What, what is so amazing? I'm not saying you disrespect those people. But what we've done is we've taken, we've glorified certain things that, you know, somebody who saves lives is far more glorified. Somebody who teaches children is far more glorified. Somebody who's helping, you know, orphans is far more glorified in Allah's sights. The elderly are far more glorified than someone who sings, than someone who entertains you. Like, there's a difference, you know. And that, what that does is our, our reverence and our awe and our appreciation, it shifts as a culture. It shifts the people that entertain us, and it actually takes it away from people that truly deserve our respect and our attention. You understand? A next tendency, just a group that I, I should have mentioned in the previous khutbah, I didn't get a chance to, is just some segments of our society that all of a sudden, the moment we look at them, we kind of think something is wrong with them. And particularly this was the case in many cultures in the world, and Allah highlighted it in His Qur'an in very subtle and beautiful ways. For example, divorced women. Women that used to be married, and they're no longer married, are looked at as mm, damaged goods. Or, can we, do we really have to invite them because it'll be, a ba- it'll be bad luck for the rest of the, 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 the party to invite them or whatever. We, we kind of tend to keep them aside. And you know what Allah said about our Prophet ﷺ? That if, if the mothers of the believers do not abide by the standards Allah has set them, Allah will replace those wives with other wives. And when he talked about it, that in Surah Al-Tahreem, in the list of qualities that in a, to Allah are commendable qualities, he mentioned at the end, thayyibatin wa abkara. And thayyibat means divorced women, previously divorced or widowed. And abkara means previously unmarried. Allah Azza wa mentioned the previously divorced first. And ulama like Ibn Ashur and others have commented, this is Allah's way of highlighting that those are more honorable in the sight of Allah and more preferred even for our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as marriage prospects. As a matter of fact, with the exception of Aisha radiallahu anha, all of the mothers of the believers are either previously divorced or widowed. That is the actual sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So in our society to consider a previously divorced woman less eligible for marriage, or a blemish on her family, hey, that, this, this family has a divorce in it, therefore let's not get any of their daughters married because, you know, we don't know how they are. Because it's like a, it's like a virus that spreads, you know. So it'll look bad on the rest of the family. This is the kind of tendency we develop towards people, thinking less and less of them. Musa alayhi salam was given Torah. Musa alayhi salam is mentioned more than any other prophet in the Qur'an. And Allah azza wa gave him a book that was reaffirmed by so many prophets that came after him. They kept coming and reaffirming what was given to him, meaning Musa alayhi salam. And our Prophet sallallahu is constantly given reference and example of Musa alayhi salam. And the people that follow Musa alayhi salam are considered people of knowledge. People of knowledge. And yet, Allah told Musa alayhi salam, you don't know enough, you need to go learn from someone. You need to go learn. And we know his name, Khadir or Khidr, right? We say that Quran doesn't mention his name. Quran doesn't mention this person's name, who Musa is supposed to go learn from. But how does the Quran describe this person? What are, I mean, He's such a big deal that this is the Shaykh of Musa alayhi <laughs> salam. Do you understand? Musa alayhi salam is the biggest celebrity in the Quran, and this is Musa's teacher. So he's a really big deal. This is not a small personality. This is a very massive personality. How is he introduced in the Quran? فَوَجَدَ عَبْدًا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا we f- Then they found a servant among our servants. That's his name in the Qur'an. A servant, a slave, among the many slaves Allah has. That's it? That's all we get? No name, no title, no credentials, no... That's a, what, everybody's abd. Allah Azza wa is describing something. People that reach the, reach the very heights of knowledge. You know how we have more and more respect for people that have more knowledge? 
And culturally in Islam, we have more respect for scholars, for example. Allah Azza wa Jalla is describing now from the other side. If you, if you happen to be someone who's learned, if there are people who give you respect because you have more knowledge than they do, understand something. The one who knew more, so much more that Musa alayhi salam had to come learn from him. Make hijrah to him to learn from him. This man, Allah says the highest title he earned is that he's just a slave. Just a slave. Now think about the word slave. The word slave in any language, however you translate it, is not a dignified word. It's a pretty embarrassing word. When you use the word slave, you've taken away all respect. You've t- there's, there's no lower title that exists than slave. That's the title Allah gave this man, this teacher of Musa alayhi salam. Abdan. Not even al abd, not even lam al ta'rif, not even the slave, a slave. You want to know more? Among other slaves we have, min ibadina. <laughs> that's that's his, the way he's described. Why? Because the highest honor, the highest honor you and I will ever earn is to be a law slave. No title, no money, no status, no accomplishment, no degree, no recognition by people will ever earn you and me the respect that will come to you and me if we internalize, truly internalize that we are in fact Allah's slave. There's no greater respect than that. And when you have that, you're not looking for respect from anywhere else. Your respect does not come from recognition. Can you imagine the most respectable human being on the earth at the time and nobody knew him? Nobody knew, and to, even to this day we argue what was his name. To this day we argue what's his name, subhanAllah. Our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa think about this as I leave you today. Our Messenger وسلم, has many names in the Qur'an. Allah calls him Muhammad. Allah calls him Ahmad. Allah calls him Rasul, Nabi, Muzammil, Muddathir. He's got many names. But when Allah Azza wa Jal took him up to the seventh heaven, this is the highest that any human being has ever reached, yes? That's the highest any human being has ever reached. Meaning, you are more honored now, Ya Rasulullah, than ever before. You understand? At that moment, what does Allah say? How does Allah describe him? فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَى سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي أَسْرَى بِعَبْدِهِ لَا بِرَسُولِهِ لَا بِنَبِيِّهِ And even the word Muhammad is dignified, the praised one. But no, at that highest place, the highest title he earned is that he is a slave of Allah. This, this is the actual honor of a believer. The actual shield of honor that you and I wear is that we are proud to be slaves of Allah Azza wa Jal. And when that happens, it frees you from every other slavery. You are no longer a slave of fashion. You're no longer a slave of people's opinions. You're no longer a slave of money. You're no, lo- no longer a slave of status. You don't care about anything else because your dignity and your worth and your respect has come from slavery to Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.